nutrition. Good evening, Mom. What are you doing? Good evening, dear. I am preparing nutritious food for us. Mom, could you please tell me about the components of our food? Sure. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals are the main components of our food. These components of food are called as nutrients. Mom, plants also get their nutrients in the same way? No, dear. Plants have different mode of getting their components. Could you please clear my concept about nutrition in plants? Mode of nutrition in plant. Mom, could you please tell me where are the food factories of plants located? And how do plants obtain the raw materials from the surroundings? Dear, let me clear all your doubts. The synthesis of food in plants occurs in leaves. Thus leaves are the food factories of plants. Let us discuss how raw materials reach the leaf for preparing food. Water and minerals are transported to the leaves by the vessels which run like pipes. Water from soil moves through the root, stem, branches and finally reaches at the leaves. Minerals form a continuous path or passage for the nutrients to reach the leaf. The surface of leaf has minute pores called as stomata. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. Carbon dioxide gas is taken from air through the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves. The leaves have a green pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll helps leaves to capture the energy of the sunlight. This energy is used to prepare food from carbon dioxide and water. The process of photosynthesis can be represented as an equation given here. Water and carbon dioxide in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives carbohydrate and oxygen. Dear, I think all your doubts must have been cleared. Yes, Mom, you are absolutely right. Types of Nutrition The nutrients are required for the proper growth and development of living organisms. Nutrients provide energy that is needed to carry out the metabolic functions of the body. Nutrition can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Plants are the only living organisms that synthesize food for themselves. Thus, plants are autotrophs. The word auto means self and this mode of nutrition is called autotrophic nutrition. Animals and most other living organisms like human beings take in ready-made food prepared by the plants. They are called heterotrophs and this mode of nutrition is called as heterotrophic nutrition. The organisms that are involved in the processing of dead or decayed organic matter are called saprotrophs and this type of nutrition is called as saprotrophic nutrition. Some plants like cascuta derives their nutrition from other plants called the host plants. Such plants are called as parasitic plants and this mode of nutrition is called as parasitic nutrition. Parasitic nutrition Dear, do you know there are some plants which do not have chlorophyll? I never heard about this, but it's really amazing. So how do they get their nutrition? Like humans, such plants depend on other plants and animals for their food as heterotrophic nutrition. Let us discuss more about it. Have you observed yellow tubular structures twining around the stem and branches of a tree? This is a plant called cascuta, which does not have chlorophyll. The plant on which it climbs is called a host. Cascuta gets its nutrients from that plant. Thus it is called as parasite. Have you heard of plants that can eat animals? Pitcher plants have leaf that form a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher. When an insect lands in the pitcher, the lid closes and the trapped insect gets entangled into it. The insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted in the pitcher. 
such insect eating plants are called insectivorous plants saprotrophic nutrition have you seen mushrooms can you tell whether it is a plant or an animal let's do an activity to study fungi in detail leave the pieces of a bread in a moist warm place for 2 to 3 days carefully observe the patches under a magnifying glass you will see cotton like threads spread on the bread these organisms are called fungi they secrete digestive juices on the dead and decaying matter and convert it into a solution then they absorb the nutrients from it this mode of nutrition is called saprotrophic nutrition replacement of nutrients in soil good evening grandpa what are you doing good evening dear here i am adding fertilizers to the soil grandpa why do we need to add fertilizers let me explain you about it plants absorb mineral nutrients from the soil and these minerals keep on declining in the soil to prevent the plants from being deprived of these minerals we add fertilizers to the soil they are nothing but chemically synthesized minerals fertilizers and manures contain plant nutrients such as nitrogen potassium and phosphorus these nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil nitrogen is present in abundant amount in the atmosphere but it cannot be utilized by the plants therefore a rhizobium bacterium which lives in the root nodules of grams peas moong beans and other leguminous plants fix free atmospheric nitrogen into soluble form like nitrate and nitrite the bacteria live in a symbiotic relationship with the roots of the plants these plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria another example of symbiotic relationship is lichen it is the association of fungi and algae the fungus provides the minerals and water along with shelter to the algae and this in turn prepares food as it contains chlorophyll in them